There was a wedding party in a fancy restaurant downtown. The guests were singing and dancing, the orchestra was playing cheerful music, and the tables were full of delicacies. Yet the bride was sad and tired, as if it were not her party. The groom sitting at another table was getting more and more drunk. The girl's mother-in-law was entertaining the ladies from high society, while poor Martha was sitting alone, feeling lonely and sad. She had a lot of pain in her legs and back. Her stomach caused discomfort because of her pregnancy, and the corset of her wedding dress pressed against her abdomen, causing even more pain. The woman thought, I asked my husband's relatives to organize the wedding early, before my belly was so big, but my mother-in-law made a thousand excuses to delay the wedding as long as possible. I feel so bad I'm pregnant with triplets, and now I'm supposed to dance and have fun and pretend I feel fine. Martha felt very sick and decided to go to the bathroom. Now, she had to go very often due to her complicated pregnancy. She struggled to get up from the table and worked her way out of the restaurant hall, holding the long hem of her dress. Though she saw her mother-in-law, Victoria, discussing the event with some important lady, she didn't even notice Martha. Angelica, dear, I don't even know how to survive such a drama. My son Mark went crazy and brought this girl from the orphanage to our house. Moreover, she is pregnant with triplets, so we had to organize this damn wedding. I almost fainted. Um, I don't know what sins the universe is punishing me for with all this. You know, I'm not even sure they're my son's babies. This girl is very cunning. She'll do anything to be rich. Maybe she's lying to my son, but he is too gullible, like a child. He says he loves her madly and doesn't care what I say. I thought he was going to marry Stephanie, the architect's daughter. She's such a nice girl, not like this stupid Martha. Martha felt so bad, so offended, that she coughed loudly. Victoria flinched in surprise, turned around, and smiled as if nothing had happened. Darling, are you okay? You look so sad. I'll tell the driver to take you home. You need to get some rest. You look really bad. We'll be fine without you, the bride nodded, swallowing her tears. She truly felt awful, especially after hearing those disgusting words from her mother-in-law, and she decided to leave her own wedding. There were strangers all around. She didn't even have anyone to talk to. These rich, arrogant people looked at her with slight contempt. At home, she cried for a long time. She had hoped her husband would notice that she had left the restaurant and at least call her, but no. Mark came home in the morning, drunk, smelling of alcohol and other women's perfume. He immediately fell on the bed and fell asleep without even undressing. Martha felt even worse, thinking sadly, this is not the wedding I dreamed of. It's a pathetic imitation of a holiday under the loud snoring of her husband. The young pregnant woman lay in bed, and thought about how wonderful their love had begun. Martha had never liked her name. Since childhood, it seemed too silly and ridiculous. It was given to her by the orphanage caregivers after someone left her near the entrance when she was three years old. The girl didn't remember much of her life at home, only scandals, tears, begging for help, and fragments of some woman's words, get up, let's go, and don't cry. I can't afford to raise you, you live in another place. Martha had no idea who she was, or where she came from, she had no notes or birth certificate with her. At the age of three, the girl could barely speak, didn't know her name, and was very afraid of people. Little by little, she accepted her situation, but she remained quiet and not very sociable. Her orphanage childhood was like a nightmare. Every day was the same, getting up early, going to lessons, having lunch, everything was strictly according to the schedule. Other children resisted such a routine and organized boycotts and tantrums. They thought such a life was unbearable, but Martha had never known any other life so she accepted everything calmly, thinking that this was the way it should be. She studied very well, and her teachers liked her for her analytical mind and obedient personality. After graduation from the orphanage, they even helped her to get her own apartment. The apartment was in a very old building, but still, it was cozy. Martha dreamed of becoming a doctor, so she went to medical school. She also worked part-time as a nurse in the hospital because she needed some money to survive. Martha was a pretty, petite, slender girl with beautiful curly hair. Many guys liked her, but the girl was in no hurry to start a relationship with anyone. She promised herself that first she had to get an education and start earning enough money, and only then could she think about marriage. However, the reality turned out to be different. One day she was examining a patient after surgery. It was an attractive young guy with brown eyes and Martha immediately liked him. The guy was polite and well-mannered, showering her with nice compliments. A friendship developed between them that quickly turned into love. Mark turned out to be a guy from a wealthy family. His father was an entrepreneur, and his mother worked in the city administration. At first, Martha was embarrassed to tell the truth about her life, but she didn't want to lie, so she told him honestly that she was an orphan and didn't have rich parents. Mark took the news in a normal way and praised her, saying, now I admire you even more you achieve everything on your own. You manage to study, 
and also work. It's unbelievable. I'm not capable of that. My father sent me to study in another country, but even there he tortured me with his supervision. And my mother constantly gave me advice, teaching me about life as if I were a little child who didn't understand anything. I'm sick of it. I... Martha objected. You don't realize how happy you are. If I had someone taking care of me like that, I would be the happiest person in the world. If you think that total independence is cool, you are wrong. I have no one who can support me, and it's very hard. The young people began a relationship, and Martha was madly in love with Mark, of course, she could not resist, and all her promises to herself were soon broken. It seemed to the girl that she was now the happiest person in the world, Mark was so tender and caring, and he promised that they would be together forever, and that nothing could separate them. Her college friends were envious when her fiancé picked her up after classes, and the proud and happy Martha walked with him hand in hand to the car. She thought she was incredibly lucky because many girls liked Mark, but he fell in love with her. However, after a few months, everything changed. The girl began to feel nauseous she wanted to sleep all the time and cried for no reason. Martha decided to take a pregnancy test, and it was positive. She was in shock. What should she do? They had only been dating for a short time, Mark hadn't even introduced her to his parents, and now she was already pregnant. This was not part of their plans, they had dreamed of going on vacation to the sea together, but they hadn't thought about something serious yet. Moreover, Martha had not finished her studies yet. She still felt like a child herself. It was too early for her to think about children. She didn't know how to tell her fiancé that she was pregnant, so she hesitated for a couple of weeks, and then finally decided to talk to him. Darling, I have to go to the doctor tomorrow, will you come with me? I really need your support, please, the worried fiancé agreed. Sure, what's wrong? Are you sick? Martha replied evasively. Well, in a certain sense, we'll find out tomorrow. Mark accompanied Martha to the ultrasound examination, and the results shocked them both. She was having three babies. Even the doctor was shocked. He looked at the screen and repeated, one, two, three. No way. You're having triplets. Congratulations. This is very rare. I don't remember anything like this in my medical practice. Mark was indignant on the way from the hospital. Martha, how could this happen? You're a future doctor. You should have thought about birth control. It's a disaster, Martha replied. How am I supposed to tell my parents about it? They'll kill me. Where are we going to live in your small apartment? No way. I don't have my own place yet. My father promised to give me an apartment for my wedding, but now I don't even know how he will react to all this. The girl cried. I don't know what to do either. I'm not ready for pregnancy. I need to finish my studies. And don't yell at me. I'm not the only one to blame. Are you going to leave me now? How of course you'll mow me. You don't need an orphan pregnant with triplets. Mark put his arms around her, pressed her against him and said, Don't cry. Stress is not good for you. I am not going to leave you. They are my babies too. We have to tell my parents the truth and get married. That's okay. We'll cope with it together. Though Martha was worried about his parents' reaction, she managed to However, Mark's parents didn't like her right away and acted arrogantly. Mom, Dad, I need to tell you something. Martha and I love each other. And we're about to have triplets, so we need to get married, Mark said. Please don't look at me like that. His parents were shocked. His mother, Victoria, cried out and clutched her heart, while his father silently frowned. There were long, humiliating questions and arguments about Martha's background, and his parents hated her even more. Not only was she pregnant, but she was also a penniless orphan. Such a girl was not suitable for the role of their only son's wife. However, there was nothing they could do. They had to accept their son's choice. They decided that Martha and Mark would live in his parents' mansion and rent out Martha's apartment. So Martha began a completely different adult family life. She didn't have to work part-time anymore because her fiancé's family was totally against it. Fortunately, they at least allowed her to finish her studies. Martha wanted her and Mark to get married before everyone could see her belly. She imagined how she would dance with her beloved and tried on different styles of dresses and jewelry. After all, a wedding is not just a party. It's a symbol of love and a lifelong memory. But Victoria deliberately postponed the wedding date three times, coming up with new excuses. First, she got sick. Then there were urgent matters at work. And finally, she didn't like the restaurant. In general, Victoria was a quarrelsome, arrogant person. It seemed that this woman was incapable of compassion, respect, or doing anything good. Her family and co-workers were under her control and obeyed her unconditionally. She smiled kindly at Martha. But as soon as Mark came home from work, she immediately invited him into her office to start arguments. Mark, do you know what your fiancé did today? She ruined your silk shirt. She's lying in bed all the time, flipping from one side to the other, and doesn't want to do anything Mark's mother continued. Mark, honey, you met her not long ago. Are you even sure these are your babies? Why would you want that kind of responsibility? What's so extraordinary about this girl? No intelligence, no university degree, no family. Do you have any idea what it's like to raise three kids? You'll go crazy. You're so young. 
You have your whole life ahead of you. But Mark, you're condemning yourself to sleepless nights. Come to your senses before it's too late. But Mark was getting furious. Mom, what do you suggest I do kick Martha out? Considering she's pregnant, what will people think of us? Anyway, I love her. You're right, I don't want kids, and I can't even imagine what it would be like. But I guess I'll get used to it. Anyway, I don't have a choice, the woman smiled sweetly. Actually, you have a choice, and you don't even have to kick her out. I have another idea after such conversations. Mark was annoyed and angry. It seemed he was no longer happy about becoming a father. Even the wedding didn't feel like a real wedding. Mark only said something slurred and nervously put the ring on Martha's finger, and then he didn't even notice her absence. Is that the behavior of a loving man? The tenderness, care, and warmth had vanished. Was it all because of her pregnancy? They both were not ready for it. Two weeks passed, but no one was planning a wedding trip. Mark's parents counted the money given to the newlyweds and didn't even let Martha see the wedding gifts. They began to argue with Mark more and more often. He became annoyed that she was twisting and turning awkwardly all night, not allowing him to sleep properly. So her husband began to sleep in another bedroom. Martha was very offended by this. She missed him very much and wanted hugs, warmth, and affection. Also, she feared childbirth and wanted support because she was afraid of it. After all, she was having triplets, and she was terrified that something would go wrong. Martha was not ready for motherhood. She tried to stay calm, thinking that when Mark took the babies in his arms, he would love them and everything would change. But the very next day, her husband upset her even more. I'm going on a business trip tomorrow for about three weeks. I need to settle important business matters. Tears came to the woman's eyes. Mark, is it really that urgent? I don't want to stay in this house with your parents. What if labor starts early? What am I supposed to do then? The doctors said it had never happened in their medical practice, and they aren't sure if they should do a C-seater. I'm scared. Mark, how can you leave me all alone at such an important moment? Please stay. Don't scare me even more. Her husband frowned. You're definitely not going into labor this month. Please read less nonsense. You're at least a month away from giving birth and your births and you're not alone. If anything happens, my parents will take you to the hospital. Why are you being so cranky? I'm working hard for both of us. I'm making money for our family. I'm at the beginning of my career now, and I need to prove myself as an ambitious and responsible employee. Martha was offended, but she didn't make a scene. She only saw her husband off on his business trip and waited for him. Life in a rich mansion reminded her of an orphanage. Everything was strictly according to schedule, only as Victoria wished, and no one cared about Martha's opinion in any matter. No one noticed her, as if she didn't exist, and it was humiliating. Once, she felt sick at night and went into labor. Martha was frightened. She barely made it to her mother-in-law's room and started screaming, help, please help. Help me, Victoria looked out unhappily. Why are you screaming? You haven't even given birth yet, but there's already no peace in this house. What's wrong? Martha was screaming in pain and begging for help. She was getting worse by the minute. Her mother-in-law immediately called an ambulance and said, okay, we need to pack your bag. Where's your ID? And please don't scream like that. Where is the ambulance? I don't want you to give birth in my house. Martha was taken to the hospital. Her situation was critical, and she could have lost the babies. The doctors fought for her life and the lives of the babies for 24 hours. Everything went well, but Martha had to stay in the hospital just in case. The young woman tried to call her husband. She wanted him to come back early to support her, but his phone was unavailable. Her mother-in-law didn't answer her calls either. Martha was nervous. What is going on? Are they all ignoring me? I don't understand. Luckily, Martha had some money in her pocket but it was enough for a week at most. More than a week had passed, and still, no one had come to see her. Mark's phone had been unavailable for over a week. Scary thoughts began to pop into her head. Had Mark left her and changed his phone number? Martha cried desperately and became very nervous. Other women in the maternity ward tried to comfort her. Also, Martha made friends with a nurse named Michelle, who felt sorry for her and tried to distract her with conversations, but Martha didn't feel any better. Suddenly, Martha asked Michelle, could you please go to this address, find my husband and give him my note, or at least ask if he's back from his business trip. What if something terrible happened to Mark? Please help me, the nurse agreed to help. And on her next shift, she came to Martha and told her something that shocked the poor woman. Your husband is perfectly healthy. I saw that idiot getting into a car with some rich woman. I ran to him and tried to give him your note to explain everything, but he only said calmly, you're mistaken. I don't know any Martha. I'm sorry, he didn't even read the note. He just tore it up and threw it away. So honey, get ready for hard times. He abandoned you and decided to forget about everything. It's a nightmare, Martha cried, and tears poured down her face. The nurse realized, you're in labor. I'll bring the doctor surprisingly. The labor went well. She didn't even need a C-section. Two boys and a girl were born. Martha looked at her babies and cried with both joy and pain. She was completely lost and didn't know what to do. 
How was she going to survive? She hoped for a miracle, that this was some mistake, some bad dream, and that Mark would come to his senses and pick her up from the maternity ward. But the miracle never happened. The day after tomorrow, Martha would be discharged from the hospital, but she had nothing at all for that. Martha was very nervous and asked Michelle for help again. Michelle, I have no one else to ask. Please help me. I have an apartment, but there are tenants living there now. Can you go there and tell them to move out? I need somewhere to live, the nurse consoled her. Don't worry, honey. I'll help you. You know what? I'll ask my brother to bring flowers and balloons. After all, you should be in the holiday spirit. Vincent is very nice, kind, and sympathetic, but he has a limp on his left leg. He saved a child once. The boy was almost hit by a car, and Vincent saved him, but he was injured. Don't cry at first. It won't be easy for you, but I'll help you. I'll call the mayor's office. Triplets are a rarity in our city, so maybe they'll provide you with a bigger apartment and financial support. My brother and I will also help you. I can see that you are a decent woman, but your husband turned out to be a scoundrel. It's going to be hard for you while the kids are young, but when they grow up, they will protect and support you. Look at me, I don't have kids, but my life is even harder than yours. The day of discharge came, and the whole staff of the maternity ward helped Martha get ready because people from the mayor's office came to the hospital to meet Martha and the babies. The triplets surprised everyone. Even journalists from the local TV channel came. They wanted to make a report about this amazing story of the triplets. Michelle's brother Vincent was waiting for Martha downstairs. He turned out to be an attractive, tall man, except for the limp on his left leg. He handed her the flowers and hugged her, telling her to smile. I'm going to help you now. Then people from the mayor's office surrounded them, started asking questions, and promised to provide her with a three-bedroom apartment. After that, Michelle and Vincent helped her into a cab and accompanied her home. Martha entered her tiny apartment and sighed heavily. How would she cope with three babies on her own? She had no stroller, no cribs, nothing, and she was so hurt by Mark's behavior. But she decided that she was going to survive in spite of everyone and prove that she didn't need a man like that. At the same time, the arguments in Mark's family didn't stop because the TV showed a report about a mother who gave birth to triplets. Of course, everyone saw that some man accompanied Martha, but the TV report was short. They mostly filmed Martha and her babies. Victoria yelled, look at her. I told you that these babies weren't yours, but you didn't believe me. A real father of the babies picked her up from the hospital. I also asked our driver to follow her with a camera. He should have filmed the whole situation. Soon we'll see who she was cheating on you with. Mark was in doubt. What makes you think it was the father of her babies? Maybe she asked someone to pick her up from the hospital. Mom, I shouldn't have done that to her. Why did you even ask me to do that? I love Martha, but you're making me leave her. Actually, she's my wife. Victoria kept yelling. Why are you so stupid? Why don't you believe me? All right, when my driver brings you the video, you'll see who your wife was with. I don't want three kids from another man in the house. Moreover, I'll make sure she doesn't get an apartment from the mayor's office. She has no money to live on so she'll come to us soon and beg for forgiveness. We already know the truth and will never forgive her. She's so impudent, it's obvious that she was brought up in an orphanage. Mark was weak and always lived according to his mother's instructions. He never had his own opinion, therefore, though he loved his wife and his conscience tormented him. He didn't dare to disobey his mother, but he hoped that Martha would really come to him for help and they would reconcile. The driver gave Victoria the flash drive with the video when she was on her way to an important presentation. Victoria had been preparing for it for a long time, making a lot of interesting slides. She made an opening speech and inserted the flash drive into her laptop so that everyone could see her presentation on the big screen. However, she got it all mixed up and instead of the right flash drive, inserted the one with the video. When Martha and Vincent appeared on the screen together, everyone was shocked. Many of those present were attending Mark's wedding and had met Martha in person but they couldn't understand why Mark wasn't by her side. Who was the man picking her up from the hospital? Victoria quickly realized the stupid mistake she had made, and she immediately changed the flash drive to the correct one, apologized, and continued with her presentation. One of the entrepreneurs, Oliver, didn't watch the presentation at all. He was not himself because he recognized the man in the video. Vincent was the same stranger who had saved his eight-year-old son on the roadway a year ago. The boy's father had been on a long business trip at the time, and upon his return, he watched the footage from the cameras at the intersection, remembering the face of his savior, but it remained unknown who he was and where he was from. While the ambulance took care of the child Vincent had left, even refusing medical help, and now Oliver saw him again. Not wanting to waste any time, he found out through his friends that Victoria's son had left his wife and babies, discovered where Martha lived, and went to see her. It was his only chance to find out something about the man who had saved his son. Knowing that he was going to visit a young mother of triplets, 
Oliver bought toys and some essentials for the babies. When a pale and very skinny young woman opened the door, she invited him in, though she was very surprised to see him. Please hurry up, I have three babies, and you can hear them crying. It's time to feed them. Oliver handed her the goodies and asked, I won't take up much of your time. Who is the man who picked you up from the hospital? I happened to see the video and I really need to talk to him but don't know how to find him. Oh, I almost forgot I also bought some gifts for you and some grocery. Martha felt pleased yet embarrassed as she replied, Thank you so much. The man's name is Vincent. He is the brother of the nurse from the hospital. He is a very nice guy and has helped me a lot. My husband left me and our babies but that's okay we'll survive without him. I'll give you the address of the hospital where you can find Michelle. Martha's life was really hard. There was no other income besides the child allowance from the state, and it was not enough. Vincent and Michelle helped her as best they could. They found old cribs and brought her some baby clothes and a baby bathtub, but they couldn't find a stroller for the triplets. Martha was surviving on just two hours of sleep a night. She looked like a pale ghost and had lost at least 10 kilograms. Whenever Alex started crying, Tim would join in, and when they calmed down, Amy would start crying too. She would not have coped without Michelle and Vincent's help. However, Martha made up her mind and was the first to file for divorce. When Mark received the letter from the court, he couldn't believe his eyes. He immediately ran to his mom, exclaiming, Mom, it's over. Martha filed for divorce. I've already gotten a letter from the court, he was distressed, asking. But you promised that she would come to apologize and reconcile, that she wouldn't be able to raise three babies alone. What am I supposed to do now? I thought you were right. I thought I should enjoy life like I used to, going to nightclubs with my friends. I didn't want the responsibility. I even slept with some girl the other day, but it doesn't bring me joy anymore. I miss Martha. Victoria was very angry after the incident with the video and started yelling at her son, don't be such an idiot. If she doesn't ask for our help, then I was right about everything. Apparently this man is the father of her babies. She cheated on you with him. Relax and forget about her. What's so special about her? She's not the last girl on the planet. Martha turned out to be more cunning than I thought, but I'm glad she filed for divorce. We would never have accepted her children as members of our honorable family. And since she filed for divorce herself, you wouldn't even have to pay her alimony. At that time, Oliver finally found Vincent and came to visit him. The man began to thank him, saying, Hello, Vincent. I'm the father of the boy you saved from death. I see you've been injured. I didn't know. I tried to find you, but I failed. Thank you so much. What can I do for you? You can ask for anything. Vincent felt embarrassed and began to speak. Anyone would do the same thing if they were in a similar situation. Your son accidentally rode his bicycle on the roadway and the car driver didn't have time to react. He tried to stop, but the speed was too high. I had no time to think twice and immediately saved the boy. I'm glad I was able to help your child. I thought I was just badly bruised, but it turned out that I had broken my leg. It was a compound fracture, and the bone didn't heal properly, so I'm limping badly now. Oliver was shocked. I'm so sorry about that. Thank you so much again. Can I ask you one question? Who is Martha to you? I visited her today when I was trying to find you. She's very thin and pale. It's probably not easy for her to cope with three babies on her own. Vincent replied, I met her by chance. My sister works at the hospital and asked me to help Martha. Her husband abandoned her and their babies, and now she is suffering. That jerk didn't even give her any money. My sister and I are helping Martha as much as we can, but we're not rich either. You know, I didn't always live like this. I had a good job in a big company, and then I was set up and accused of stolen goods, and now I'm also limping so I can't get a good job. I'd really like to buy Martha a stroller, but a new one costs a lot of money. Oliver listened carefully, not interrupting, and marveled at this man's compassion and courage. Vincent, I'd like you to work for my company. What do you think about that? First, you will be a mid-level manager, and then you can get a promotion. You will have a decent salary and a convenient work schedule. Don't worry about the stroller. I will buy it for Martha. Vincent rejoiced. Thank you very much. I'll gladly accept it. I won't let you down from that day on. Life changed for all of them. Vincent started working for a big company, and he turned out to be an excellent employee. Oliver was very pleased with Vincent's work and paid him generous bonuses. The entrepreneur kept his promise and bought a nice stroller for the triplets. Martha was overjoyed when she saw it. She would never have been able to buy such a stroller. Now walking with the babies was no longer an ordeal but a joy. Martha's life changed and Vincent became very close. The guy became a part of their family, took care of her and the babies, and helped her with everything. They felt really comfortable together. The pain from the betrayal of her husband began to subside. Martha realized that she and her ex-husband were completely different people, and that there was probably not real love but passion between them. Now she had no regrets about the divorce.
Vincent helped Martha get a three-bedroom apartment from the mayor's office. Time passed quickly, the kids were already going to kindergarten, and Martha finally got a decent job. She organized her schedule properly and could cope with everything, and Vincent was always by her side like a faithful knight, which made her feel calm and happy. The little ones called him Daddy and he hugged them tightly. But things were bad in Victoria's family. The woman was removed from her position, and her husband's business was on the verge of bankruptcy. Mark began to drink a lot of alcohol and constantly blamed his mother for ruining his family. He couldn't forget the gentle and loving Martha. He even tried to reconcile with her, constantly calling her. But now his ex-wife ignored him or turned off the phone, just as he had done once. Their family was not welcomed in high society after everyone found out what a terrible thing they had done to their daughter-in-law and three grandchildren. Mark started gambling in casinos and losing the rest of his parents' money. At night, he had fun with girls, but they didn't bring him even a small part of the warmth that Martha had given him. Victoria was panicking. She saw her life falling apart and realized it was all because of her. She hated her former daughter-in-law even more. She only wanted to make fun of her, to teach that stupid girl a lesson. She expected Martha to come to them in despair, begging to let her in like a stray dog, but things turned out differently. Her daughter-in-law not only didn't ask for help but also filed for divorce. Now Martha was living in wealth because Vincent got a senior position in Oliver's company. Victoria decided to offer her son another dirty plan. Mark, dear, will you forgive me if I take the children away from Martha? They will live with you after all. You are their father. Mark perked up and replied, I'd give anything for that. Victoria immediately went to court. She made Martha nervous, but her dirty plan failed. Victoria didn't take into account that they had told everyone that Mark wasn't the father of her children. They were the ones who claimed that Martha had cheated on Mark and that the real father was Vincent. So when Martha came to court, she calmly stated, Mark is not the father of my babies, so leave me alone and let me live my life in peace, Victoria yelled. You are lying. You're just getting revenge on our family. That's why you don't want the kids to communicate with their real father. But I'll prove it. I'll do a DNA test. Martha exclaimed, you have no right to do this without my permission and you will never get my permission. Get out of my life. You told everyone that I married Mark just because of money. You've convinced everyone that I cheated on my husband. You abandoned me in the hospital with three babies back then, and you wanted me to disappear from your life. Be happy. I'm no longer in your life. Why aren't you happy? Vincent hired a brilliant lawyer, and thanks to his tactics, the court supported the mother of the children and closed the case. On the way out of the courtroom, Mark clutched Martha's arm and begged her, Forgive me, darling, please. I was so stupid. I didn't want to do that to you, but my mother forced me to. I still love you. I can't forget you. Martha pulled her arm away and looked at her ex-husband with disdain. You can't forget me, and I don't want to remember you. You know, a husband and father should be able to protect his wife and children, but you are incapable of that. You do everything your mommy tells you to do. You know, Mark, I'm actually grateful to you, seriously. If you hadn't betrayed me so cowardly, I would never have met a decent man, and I would never have been happy. Goodbye. I will never come back to you, she walked away, clattering her heels confidently. Mark wanted to scream. He realized that he had ruined his own happiness. After the court, he lost his mind with grief, became an alcoholic, and began to hate his own mother. Soon he started gambling again and lost the mansion and property. The gangsters took everything away for debts, but that wasn't enough for them. Victoria looked at least 15 years older now, and out of desperation. She told the gangsters that Mark had children and that they could kidnap them to get a large sum of money. She wanted to pay off her son's debt that way, also she wanted to punish Martha. Victoria no longer realized that she was the one who had ruined her family's life. This woman believed that Martha was the reason for all her problems. One day, Martha picked up her children from kindergarten after work and decided to take a walk in the park. The kids liked to play on the playground there. The woman took out her cell phone and wanted to call Vincent to ask what to cook for dinner. Suddenly, she heard other moms screaming, Who the hell are you? Where are you taking the children? Stop Martha saw two men in hoods grab her children, put them in a van, and drive away. She ran after them, tripped, fell, and screamed as loud as she could, Help! Somebody help me! They kidnapped my kids. The van disappeared over the horizon. Martha screamed like a madwoman. Someone called the ambulance and the police. Vincent found Martha in the hospital. Paramedics had given her a sedative, and she kept repeating, Vincent, find the children, I beg you. I'll die without them. Maybe they've already killed them or tortured them or sold them. Who could have done it and why? Tell me. The man hugged her and promised, don't say that. The police are already looking for them. They will find the children soon, but you have to help them. You need to talk to the investigator. Try to describe the kidnappers and their car as accurately as possible, please. A lot depends on it. Luckily, Martha remembered the license plate number which helped to find the van. The van was tracked down on the way out of the city near the forest 
and they began searching for the children in that area, but there were no results. Martha begged Vincent, let's go there, please. I'll find my kids myself. The man hesitated. Honey, you're very weak. You're shivering. You can't even stand on your feet, Martha replied sharply. Either you take me there, or I'll run away from the hospital myself and find my children. They went to the place where the search operation was ongoing, talked to all the local inhabitants, and showed pictures of the children. But no one had seen anything. Vincent was very upset. It was already getting dark outside. He persuaded Martha, darling, we have to go home. Tomorrow we will continue the search, but Martha begged, no, I won't leave until I find my children. Please hear me, let's talk to people again. Maybe someone noticed something strange. Vincent couldn't watch her unbearable suffering and agreed. They were about to leave, but suddenly they saw the light in the windows at the edge of the forest, which indicated that the owner was at home. Martha immediately ran there, her heart pounding frantically. An elderly forester with a beard opened the door. He looked at the crying woman and her companion with surprise listened to their confused speech, thought for a moment, and then said, I have lived here all my life and know every corner of this neighborhood. There is only one place where kidnappers can hide, a hut by the swamp. People avoid that place. It's too scary. Follow me. I'll take my rifle with me just in case. They found the hut and looked around, suddenly noticing a faint light in the little window. Martha shrieked, but the forester put his finger to his lips, signaling for silence. Quiet someone is definitely there. You guys wait here and I'll go inside and check it out. I'm a forester. If I show up there, it won't be suspicious. Martha held her breath and prayed that the children would be all right. She watched from behind the bushes as the forester walked around the hut and then suddenly opened the door sharply. Then they could hear the sound of a fight and a gunshot. Martha couldn't wait anymore, so she ran there, and Vincent followed her. By the time they got there, the forester had already managed to tie the hands of one of the kidnappers. Martha entered the hut and saw her kids sitting on the bed, huddled together terrified. She ran to them, hugged them, and kissed them. Happiness overwhelmed her. The kidnapper denied everything, saying, I didn't kidnap anyone. I wanted to save the children. I found them in an abandoned house in a nearby neighborhood. I saw some men dragging the kids into the house. They were crying loudly. Then one of the men left, and two men stayed to watch the children. I am not stupid. I immediately realized that these were not their children and that they probably kidnapped them. I chose the right moment when the kidnappers had gone somewhere. I took the children and came here. I thought I'd go to the police in the morning to tell them everything. It was already night. I was afraid to go anywhere at night in the woods. I swear I just wanted to save the children. Martha and Vincent took the children away, and the forester said, The police will sort it out. The man was handed over to the police, and Martha finally took her kids home. They were so happy to see their mom, they hugged her with their little arms. Tears were flowing down her face, but now they were tears of happiness. The police sorted everything out, the man was really not a kidnapper but a savior. He showed them where he found the children, and the police found evidence their fingerprints in the real kidnappers. They were arrested, and the kidnappers instantly pleaded guilty, telling the name of their boss, Victoria, Martha's former mother-in-law. When the woman realized that her cunning plan had failed again, that the children and her former daughter-in-law were not harmed, but that she was about to go to jail, Victoria literally went crazy. She screamed curses and became totally insane, they had to put her in a mental health facility. Over time, she stopped recognizing people. It was a cruel but fitting retribution for all the evil she had done to Martha. Mark went missing, apparently he did something wrong again, and the gangsters found him. After everything that happened, his father died of a heart attack, so their rich and powerful family vanished. It was all caused by hatred, greed, and malice. Martha and Vincent decided to find the man who had saved the children and thank him. If it wasn't for him, it could have ended fatally. They found him in one of the abandoned houses and invited him to visit them. The poor man was so tired of wandering around abandoned buildings that he immediately agreed. He hadn't even remembered what a clean bed and a cozy home felt like. Martha gave the guest clean clothes and a towel and sent him to the bathroom, then set the table while Vincent played with the children. When dinner was ready, everyone sat down at the table. Vincent said, Gregory, you saved our children, took them to a safe place, and didn't let them freeze. It's scary to even think about what those people wanted to do to them. You're a real hero. Tell us a little about yourself. How did you end up homeless? Maybe Martha and I can help you. The man was noticeably embarrassed. It's a long story. Years ago, I had everything, a wife, a daughter, a good job. I lived in another city, and then disaster happened. My workmate died because of my fault. He was electrocuted. I went to jail. My wife left me for another man and my daughter turned against me. When I was released, I had nowhere to live, no family, and because of my criminal record, no one wanted to hire me. I was doomed and became homeless. You know, I still can't sleep well. My coworker keeps coming to me every night in nightmares. He's standing there, 
looking at me reproachfully. Thank you for taking me in. I've almost forgotten what it's like to be in a cozy house with a family. Martha was crying. She felt sorry for Gregory. His fate was so cruel. He wasn't a bad person. He was just unlucky. She talked to her husband, and they decided that Gregory should stay with their family. Martha imagined that he was her father, whom she had never known, and she felt she had to help him. So they began to live together as a big, happy family of six. Gregory enjoyed walking and playing with the children. He seemed to forget all his problems. Even his appearance changed for the better. Martha and Vincent told everyone that Martha had found her father. Their relationship was very warm, and Gregory was eternally grateful to this family for letting a stranger into their lives, offering warmth and care without asking for anything in return. Martha and Vincent had suffered a lot in their lives too, and they knew how important it was when someone offered help in the most difficult moments. Thanks to Michelle and Vincent, everything changed in Martha's life. She once thought she would not survive, but she didn't give up. She managed to survive without her ex-husband and became a happy, loved, and self-confident woman who is not afraid of any difficulties. Vincent's noble deed was also connected with Oliver's timely help. Once Vincent's fiancé had also abandoned him, she left him when he went to jail. He wasn't guilty, so he got out of jail quickly, but he had become completely disappointed in women, thinking he'd never have a family. Then he thought no one wanted a lame man. But now he was the head of a big family with a beloved woman and three adorable children by his side. He loved them, and the children thought he was their real father. Martha, Vincent, and Gregory had a difficult past, and they cherished every minute of pleasant communication, not wasting time on quarrels. It turned out that Gregory loved fishing, he taught everyone to fish, and now the family's favorite weekend activity was fishing. The men went fishing while the mother and the children sunbathed. The woman looked with love at her children and thought about how stupid she had been to be afraid of having three children. She thought she would never cope with it, but it turned out that it was difficult only the first year. Now it was fun three little people loved her and called her their mommy. It was the best reward of her life.